In this lesson, we are going to discuss nomenclature of ionic compounds. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to differentiate between cations and anions and write names and formulas of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are compounds formed by the transfer of charges of ions. Suppose we have two elements. The first element has an excess electron on its outer shell. On the other hand, the second element lacks an electron. To make up for this, there will be a transfer of electrons. The first element then has a positive charge because it lost an electron. The other element then has a negative charge because it gained an electron. Since there was a transfer of electrons that happened, these now become ions. Specifically, the positively charged ion is called a cation. It is represented by this process in which an electron is a product, showing a loss of electron. On the other hand, the negatively charged ion is called an anion. It is represented by this process in which an electron is added to the original element, showing a gain of electron. Because cations and anions have opposite charges, they attract each other. This force of attraction between oppositely charged ions is called ionic bonding, forming ionic compounds. To write the chemical formula of an ionic compound, we do crisscross of charges. This means that the charge of the cation will be the subscript of the anion, and the charge of the anion will be the subscript of the cation. Take note as the changes become the subscripts of each other, the signs are removed. The subscripts indicate the number of atoms an element has in a substance. This lesson, we are going to discuss the nomenclature of three types of ionic compounds. We are going to use the periodic table as our guide in writing and naming ionic compounds. Let's start with the cations. The first classification for cations is the type 1 ions. These are monoatomic cations having the same name as its parent element. This means that the elements under type 1 classification form ions that use the same element name as ions. Highlighted in the periodic table are the common type 1 cations. Another feature of type 1 cations is that the ions use the group numbers as their charges. For example, sodium which is in group 1A has a charge of 1, specifically positive 1 because it is a cation. Zinc is in group 2B, this means that it has a charge of positive 2. The periodic table also helps us in identifying anions. Highlighted in the table are the common monoatomic anions. In naming ionic compounds with monoatomic anions, we use the root word of the anion and attach the suffix I. For example, for oxygen, its root word is oxy. Attaching the suffix I, we get the ionic name for oxide. The charges for monoatomic anions are also determined using their group numbers. However, for anions, we subtract A from the group number. For example, all monoatomic anions under group 6 will have a charge of negative 2 because 6 minus 8 is negative 2. Once we combine the type 1 cations and monoatomic anions, we have the type 1 binary ionic compounds. These compounds contain a cation that is always written first in the formula and followed by an anion. Let us practice writing and naming type 1 binary ionic compounds. For the first example, we are going to identify the ions present in NaCl. We are also going to name the compound. The first step in naming this compound is to identify the ions present. To identify the ions present, we are going to separate the two ions together with their subscripts. Since there are no subscripts, this will automatically be 1. So we have sodium sub 1 and chlorine sub 1. To identify the charges, we are going to do a reverse crisscross on the subscripts. This means that the subscript of one ion will be the charge of the other ion. The subscript 1 of sodium will be the charge of chlorine, specifically negative 1, because chlorine will form an anion. On the other hand, the subscript 1 of chlorine will be the charge of sodium, specifically positive 1 because sodium will form a cation. After doing the reverse crisscross, we now have Na plus and Cl minus. To check if these charges are right, we can use the group numbers and see if we will get the same values. Sodium is in group 1A, being a type 1 cation, it will have a positive 1 charge. Chlorine on the other hand is in group 7A. Being a monoatomic anion, we will subtract A to get its charge. Therefore, we have negative 1. Na plus is sodium ion. Cl- on the other hand is the ion that will be formed by chlorine. Since this is an anion, we write it as chloride ion. Therefore, 
The name of this compound is sodium chloride. For the second example, we are going to write the formula for lithium nitride. To do this, we first need to identify the ions present in lithium nitride. These two ions are lithium ion and nitride ion. To identify their charges, we use their group numbers. Lithium is in group 1A, and nitrogen is in group 5A. Thus, their charges are positive 1 and negative 3 respectively. To determine the formula for this compound, we will do a crisscross of charges. The positive 1 charge of lithium will be the subscript of the nitride ion, and the negative 3 charge of nitride ion will be the subscript of the lithium ion. Thus, we have Li sub 3 and N. For the last example, we are going to identify the name and formula for a compound formed by calcium with a positive 2 charge and sulfur with a negative 2 charge. Calcium with a positive 2 charge is the calcium ion, and sulfur with a negative 2 charge is the sulfide ion. Therefore, we have calcium sulfide. Once we do a crisscross of charges, we are going to have Ca sub 2 and S sub 2. Ionic compounds are always treated as empirical formulas or in simplest terms, thus we have CAS. Yet ions may not always have a single charge. Some have multiple charges. These are what we call the type 2 cations. These are the metals that form more than one type of positive ion. Highlighted in this periodic table are the common type 2 cations. The rules on naming ionic compounds with type 2 cations is the same, but we are going to add a parenthesis after the cation, indicating the Roman numeral of the charge. This is what we call the stock system of naming type 2 cations. Their cations are grouped based on their possible charges. Highlighted in blue are the ions that may have a charge of either positive 2 or positive 3. These are chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, and nickel. Copper may either be copper 1 or 2 when it has a charge of 1 and 2 respectively. Mercury is diatomic and has a charge of positive 2 as mercury 1. It is monoatomic and has a charge of positive 2 as mercury 2. Lastly, tin and lead may either have positive 2 or positive 4 charges. The use of the suffix us or ous and ik or ic is the traditional system of writing type 2 cations. In this lesson, we will be using the stock system. Binary ionic compounds with type 2 cations use a Roman numeral depending on its charge. Let us look at some examples. We have here COBr sub 2. Since this is a binary ionic compound, we separate the two ions. We will temporarily write 1 as a subscript of cobalt. We do crisscross of subscripts to determine the charges. The subscript 1 of cobalt becomes the negative 1 charge of bromine. The subscript 2 of bromine becomes the positive 2 charge of cobalt. Thus, we have cobalt with a positive 2 charge or cobalt 2 ion and bromine with a negative 1 charge or bromide ion. We may also check from our periodic table if bromide ion should have a negative 1 charge. Since it is in group 7A, its charge is negative 1. Cobalt may have a charge of either positive 2 or positive 3. This means that our charges are correct. Combining the two ions, we have cobalt 2 bromide. Next, we are going to write the formula and name for chromium with a positive 3 charge and chlorine with a negative 1 charge. Chromium having a charge of positive 3 is our chromium 3 ion. Chlorine as an ion is chloride ion. Thus, we have chromium 3 chloride. After doing crisscross of charges, the ionic formula will be chromium chloride sub 3. For the last example, we have mercury 1 phosphide. The two ions present here are mercury 1 ion and phosphide ion. Mercury 1 is the diatomic mercury with a charge of positive 2. Phosphide ion, belonging to group 5A, has a charge of negative 3. Thus, these are the ions present. After doing crisscross of charges, we have this formula. Take note that we do not multiply the charge to a pre-existing subscript. Instead, we enclose the element or compound with the parenthesis. We're done discussing ions that are monoatomic in nature. However, there are ionic compounds with at least one polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions contain an ion composed of more than one atom. 
This may be a combination of monoatomic cation and polyatomic cation, or a polyatomic cation and a monoatomic cation, or both polyatomic ions. The common polyatomic cations are ammonium and hydronium ion. On the other hand, the common polyatomic cations are the oxygen ions. These are the anions that contain an atom of a given element with different numbers of oxygen atoms. These are the anions that usually end with the suffix 8 or 8-te. Most of the time, these are memorized from the lower portion of the periodic table. However, there is a mnemonic device to easily remember the common oxygen ions. These are Nick the Camel, 80 Clum Supper and Krebs and Phoenix, and Mangy Imps Search for a Brat Banana. To do this, we are going to identify the important word from the sentence, get the polyatomic anion from it, count the number of consonants and vowels, and then we can write the anion formula. To use the mnemonic device, we will first identify the polyatomic anion for each word. The element is already colored as yellow in the device. For nick, nitrogen will form nitrate. Carbon from camel forming carbonate. Chlorine from clam forming chlorate. Sulfur from supper forming sulfate. Chromium from Krebs forming chromate. And phosphorus from phoenix forming phosphate. Nick has three consonants and one vowel. The number of consonants will be the number of oxygen atoms or the subscript of the oxygen ion. The number of vowels will be the negative charge of the oxygen ion. Therefore, nitrate is written as NO sub 3 with a negative 1 charge. Camel has 3 consonants and 2 vowels. Carbonate is written as CO sub 3 with a charge of negative 2. Clam has 3 consonants and 1 vowel. Chlorate is written as CLO sub 3 with a charge of negative 1. Supper has 4 consonants and 2 vowels. Sulfate is written as SO sub 4 with a charge of negative 2. Krebs has 4 consonants and 2 vowels. Chromate is written as CRO sub 4 with a charge of negative 2. And lastly, Phoenix has 4 consonants and 3 vowels. Phosphate is written as PO sub 4 with a charge of negative 3. For the second mnemonic device, Meiji Imps search for a brat banana, Meiji is for permanganate, Imps for iodate, search for selenate, brat for bromate, and banana for borate. The same procedure will be used for this mnemonic device. With these mnemonic devices, the number of anions that will be needed to be memorized will be reduced. Just remember the mnemonic word and do the counting of consonants and vowels. However, some oxygen ions end in the suffix "-ite", or "-ite". And ions with the suffix are derived from the oxygen ion with the suffix "-eight". If we have an extra oxygen atom from the "-eight ion", we will be using the prefix "-per", and suffix "-eight". If we have one less oxygen from the basis, the oxygen ion has a suffix "-ite". And if the anion has two less oxygen atoms, it will have the prefix "-hypo", and the suffix "-ite". These are the different prefixes and suffixes used in oxygen ion series. For example, let us use chlorate. From our mnemonic device, chlorate can be written from the word clam, which has three consonants and one vowel. Thus, we have ClO sub 3 with a charge of negative 1. Adding one oxygen, we have perchlorate anion. Removing one oxygen from chlorate, we have chlorite. And removing two oxygen atoms from chlorate, we have hypochlorite. Let us look at some examples of writing and naming polyatomic ionic compounds. Here we have K sub 2, CO sub 3. Let us first identify the ions present. We have here K sub 2 and CO sub 3. To determine their charges, we may do crisscross of charges. This will give us potassium with a charge of positive 3 and CO with a charge of negative 2. However, we know that potassium is a group 1A element. This means that as a cation, it needs to have a positive 1 charge. On the other hand, CO with a charge of negative 2 is possible. However, carbon as an oxygen ion may only be carbonate with 3 oxygen or carbonite with 2 oxygen. Here, although its charge is correct, its subscript is not. Therefore, this is wrong. From this information, we now use positive 1 as the charge of potassium ion. This will be the subscript of our CO sub 3 anion. The subscript 2 of potassium ion will then be the charge of CO sub 3 anion. From our mnemonic device, Camel gives the formula for the carbonate ion. 
this means that we have one group of carbonate and ion, thus our ions are potassium ion and carbonate ion. The name of this compound is potassium carbonate. Next, let us identify the formula and name of the ionic compound that will be formed by copper with a positive 1 charge and ClO sub 3 with a charge of negative 1. We know that copper is a transition metal, making it a type 2 cation. Its charge will be enclosed in a parenthesis attached after its name. Therefore, we have copper 1 ion. For our anion, ClO sub 3 with a charge of negative 1 is an oxyanion. Using our mnemonic device, this will be determined by the word clam for chlorate, which has three consonants and one vowel. Since its subscript is 3 and its charge is negative 1, this is chlorate ion. The name for this compound is therefore copper 1 chlorate. Doing a crisscross of charges, the compound will be written as CuClO sub 3. For the last example, we are going to write the formula for barium sulfite. We need to identify the ions first. This may sound like a binary ionic compound, but take note that the ion is sulfite and not sulfide. This means that this is a polyatomic ion. The two ions are barium and sulfite. Let us first write the elements involved, barium, sulfur, and oxygen. Barium is in group 2A. This means that the charge should be 2. Sulfite, being an oxyanion, is based on sulfate. If sulfate is SO sub 4 with a charge of negative 2, sulfite becomes SO sub 3 with a charge of negative 2 because an ions ending in 8 have one less oxygen than an ions ending in 8. Therefore, these are the ions present in barium sulfite. We now do crisscross of charges to get the formula of the compound. Since they are both 2 even with the opposite charges, the subscript will be simplified to 1. Thus, the chemical formula is BaSO3. sub And these are some examples of polyatomic ionic compounds. Now, to conclude this lesson, let us review the following key points. Ionic compounds are compounds formed by the transfer of charges of cations, which are the positively charged ions, and then ions which are the negatively charged ions. Binary ionic compounds are ionic compounds from monoatomic cations and anions. Polyatomic ions are ions which contain more than one atom. And for our anion suffixes guide, when an anion ends in ide, it is a monoatomic anion. For example, chloride ion, which is Cl or chlorine with a charge of negative 1. Anions ending in the suffix 8 are oxyanions. For example, chlorate. This is ClO sub 3 with a charge of negative 1. And lastly, and ions ending in ite are also oxygen ions based on the oxygen ions with the suffix 8. For example, chloride, which is ClO sub 2 with a charge of negative 1. In this case, chloride has one less oxygen compared to chlorate. And that ends our discussion on the nomenclature of ionic compounds.